before the court is there was a uh, motion to quash the civil subpoena for appearance and testimony of Alan Merritt. The defendant filed a response. There was substantial disagreement about what testimony Mr. Merritt could provide. So at this time, Mr. Brown, I'll give you an opportunity to provide me your proffer as to what testimony Mr. Merritt would be able to provide. I did excuse him from being present today, but said that I would reserve ruling on that to give you an opportunity to be heard, as well as the city attorney to respond. So go ahead, Mr. Brown, tell me what testimony you believe that Mr. Merritt would be able to provide that would be relevant as to the issue as to whether or not you were disruptive in court. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, in the response from the city, that was outright lies. What it said was, Mr. Merritt wasn't there. He witnessed none of it. He was there the whole time. Uh, when you watch that video with, that we saw last time, he was the one calling roll call. So that was the, that was Alan Merritt. He saw the whole thing. He knows about the disturbance that uh, Christopher Hell caused, and he knows about the uh, uh, the whole thing from start to finish. He was there. So uh, so that. Uh, it doesn't say that Alan Merritt said that in the report. It said uh, Rosetti or there's some there's some lady that wrote a, a, a thing, I guess, lying for him, or he might not even know about this. But Rosetti said that he wasn't there, and that's outright lie. And and you saw the video, and, and Alan Merritt is the guy that was calling roll call in that uh, room, I think 102 they call that. And uh, he was absolutely there. He saw the whole thing, and he, he knows a lot of stuff about uh, why Christopher Hill did what he did. All right, and I'll hear from the city attorney with regard to the motion to quash uh, the civil subpoena for Mr. Merritt. Your Honor, I'm, I'm yes. discussing this without having actually seen the motion. But, okay, no, that's fine. But um, I, nevertheless, I will concede that I've seen the videotape, and I recognize Mr. Merritt, and I recognize that he was present at the hearing. Okay, and MJ Rossini did file a motion to quash the civil subpoena. Um, that was, and I did excuse him from being yeah. present today. So there would be no sanction for him not being present today. I didn't want you to be concerned with that. Yeah. Um, Your that Honor, I will uh, concede Mr. Brown's point that Mr. Merritt was visible in the video. All right, um, in that case then, um, what I will do is I will uh, require uh, that Mr. Merritt does appear for another hearing, unless um, at today's hearing, based on the uh, defendant's case, we're able to reach a ruling today. And we've now moved past the plaintiff's case. I did find that the plaintiff made a prima facie case. Again, that does not mean that I've found by a preponderance of the evidence, Mr. Brown, that uh, you did in fact commit the two acts, just that there is testimony in the record to support that. Um, so, Mr. Brown, do you have any witnesses present today? Uh, uh, other than other than Mr. Merritt, and I understand I'm not going to require that you produce him all today, the, because I reserve ruling. All the witnesses that I subpoenaed? Mm -hmm. All the cops are not here. Uh, uh, there is one here. Uh, uh, Larry is here from court security. Uh, none of the cops are here. Uh, I subpoenaed uh, Sherman. Uh, I subpoenaed uh, Wilson. Uh, and I subpoenaed, uh, there's several of them I subpoenaed. And okay, well, let's hear from the witnesses that you have, that you do have today. Okay, do you have any witnesses? You well, have witnesses that are present today? The, the main ones I wanted to start with is the police officers, and none of them are here. The ones I wanted to start with. Well, well let's go, in the interest of efficiency, let's go with the ones that you do have here, okay? And I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not sanctioning you for not having them here. I realize you subpoenaed them. We'll deal with that. We will yes. deal with that. I'm not saying I'm going to ignore that issue, but let's deal with the witnesses that you do have so they can be, they can right. be excused, okay? Uh... I guess I could start with uh, a Vernon Peltz. He's out in the hallway. Okay, and he's, he was a witness to uh, your... Okay, yes. Go ahead. And, and a, few, a few of the witnesses I called up last night when I got this letter saying we wasn't going to continue, I told a couple of them that they don't have to be here. Only a few of them did show up that I couldn't get a hold of. So I, I was under the impression that we was going to have a hearing just on this motion as soon as I got that letter. And okay. I didn't. Would you? Would you? Would you? Are you? Are you not ready to call your witnesses? Then? Uh, I have a couple of them that, uh, that I told actually not to come here. They're primary, but we can start as long as you uh, can allow me time to get them. Uh, That's right. Also, because this might go into another day if we have to get uh, if we have to bring in uh, Alan right, Merritt. Take, correct. Take, okay. If we're going to bring in Mr. Merritt, let's take a look at schedules, and I'll allow the city attorney to consult to see when Mr. Merritt is available. Um, Let's take a look when we have enough time to... And uh, for 
the city attorney, if you have uh, an opportunity to see when Mr. Merritt is available, how does September 17th look? Um, if you could just check and see what his schedule looks like. I'm trying to do the best we can to accommodate everyone. Yeah, we're going to we'll be in touch with Mr. Merritt. Okay. Let's see whether he's available. What's the date again? I'm sorry. September, September, 17th. September 17th at 3 p.m. It would be in the afternoon. Yeah. Sure, go ahead, take a minute, see if he has an opportunity to uh, let you know what his schedule is at that point in time. Um, so, Mr. Brown, would you like to check with your witnesses that are here in the hallway to see if that date is time to work with Oh, is this to move everyone back or are we going to move everyone back to September 17th? At okay, yes. Days. You want to take a minute to check with your witnesses? Okay. Mr. Mayor's available. Okay, very good. September 17th. Yes, that works. Okay, yes. so we'll bring everyone back here September 17th at 3 p.m. The current order remains in effect as it was until that time. Uh, so we'll reset this for September 17th. Uh, I will order that Mr. Merritt appear um, to testify. And Mr. Brown, I, I do remind you that because um, in your testimony, you admitted uh, that you did film Mr. Hale, that issue, as well as the court's order regarding filming, um, that has been decided. Uh, that's something that's been decided by a higher court than me. So, and okay. I'm not saying that you can't take this up. You have the right to appeal that, yeah. and you have the right to appeal it further than the superior court if you choose. But can I mention one thing? Yes, go ahead. When I was on the stand, and my witnesses are going to testify that the group had permission. I, 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 I said that I probably did, and I might have recorded Mr. Hill, but I didn't do it without his consent, his express consent. So, so we we got to address that because that's the whole January second incident, okay, and, and that's and 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 I have three witnesses for that, okay, including and Mr. myself. And Mr. Brown, I uh, I recognize that you disagree with the court's ruling on that, and I appreciate that. However, I do find that based on the court's recollection of the testimony, that you did admit to filming Mr. Hale without his personal consent. Yes. Um, so that is uh, that is the finding of the court. So that issue has been decided for the purpose of this yes. hearing. And I'm not trying to preclude you from appealing that. Yes. If you want to appeal that, you can appeal it to the superior court. You can appeal it higher than that if you choose. Okay? But what I was saying, I didn't get to put in my case about the consent yet. I, Honor, so I, I, okay. would, I would argue that Mr. Hale's consent is irrelevant given Mr. Brown's legal position that Mr. Hale is a member of the court and therefore not an individual subject to the jurisdiction of the rule. And, so. I, and I already found that uh, you filmed Mr. Hale uh, without his consent. So that issue has been decided. So the only issue that remains is to whether or not you were disruptive in court on the separate date. Um, so uh, that's what you'll be permitted to contact uh, or to call witnesses to as to whether or not you were disruptive in court. Because when you testified, you did not admit that you were disruptive in court. That's the issue that remains. All right, sir? Yes, yes. So, uh, and again, I'm not trying to prevent you from taking this up higher as to whether the uh, court's uh, procedural rule is correct or not. You can take that as far as you're able to. Uh, but there is a court that's higher than me that's already decided that that rule was proper. All right, so when we come back, the only witnesses that will be permitted to testify go as to whether or not you were disruptive in court. On the 24th. On the 24th. Okay, so that goes, and that is what Mr. Merritt would be testifying to. That's the only thing that he would be testifying to is whether or not you were disruptive in court. All okay, right, and one other issue, sir. Yes. Uh, I'd like to, uh, actually two other issues. Uh, one is about uh, Judge Rojas, and the other one is about uh, the, uh, the, uh, Plaintiff give you two papers at the end that I didn't get to see. I, th I believe one was G uh, Judge Gordon's decision, and I just want to know what two papers he gave you. And did the and did the other thing he give you was Judge Rojas's uh, rules of uh, June fifth, uh, two thousand nineteen. Did did you give him that? No, I provided the court with copies of the of the new superior or the new city court rules that have been promulgated by Justice. By Judge Rios, as well as a copy of the December 26, 2018 decision in Mr. Brown's prior case. Yes, and I believe these were. I think they were admitted as three and four. Yes. Okay. And what we'll do, Mr. Brown, just to make sure there's no confusion, we'll make you copies of that. All right. Oh, great! Thank you. And and that's why, uh, that's why the Judge Rojas was so important because, uh, in the opening statement of uh, 
of the plaintiff here, he said four times that I have to comply with Judge Roas's rule of uh, 2005. This is prior restraint. I wasn't even in there since that rule came out, in the, you know, back in that time. I have since. But, uh, but he's trying to say that I have to comply with Judge Rojas's rule of 2005, and, uh, and that is uh, against uh, Rule 122.1. It's the exact opposite. It says that you can't record, they say, and, and, uh, and it says you have to get written permission from the person you're recording on theirs, and you've got to get permission from your master's. You've got to submit that to the court administrator. Then the court administrator gives you permission to do it. And, and I won on that ruling. On Judge Gording's ruling, if you read on that, it says they changed my ruling from getting permission from the presiding judge after they came up with his decision, and they switched it from getting consent only from the person. So I won on that. And both these two courts, city court and this court, got rules saying now, because of me, that we have to get permission from the masters, Honor, you know, from court. Honor, so this is not a hearing about whether that rule applies or not. This is a hearing about an injunction against harassment that would force Mr. Brown to comply with those rules because of his disruptive and disorderly behavior in the court. And Mr. Brown, I will note that you, you've made your record on that. You're allowed to appeal that issue. Uh, this court finds that uh, you would need the individual consent of Mr. Hale in order to film him. And yes. your testimony was that you filmed him without his individual consent. So that issue, again, that's only one act of harassment that you admitted to where there is, uh, and, and had you admitted to both, there would have been a uh, summary judgment yes. against you. But yes. you did not admit to both. But I didn't, I, didn't admit to, uh, I didn't admit to do it without his consent. Because we got group consent on two occasions. On January 1st, where we saw him at the casino, he gave us consent to come in there. That's why we was there on the 2nd. And he gave us consent, group consent, on the 2nd. So he gave us consent and, twice. And Even Brown, though he testified that he didn't, uh, he did. Okay, so, and Mr. Mr. Brown, I, I appreciate that you disagree with the court's ruling on that. I have found uh, that that was without his consent. So that one act of harassment has been proven. Um, in this uh, in this case, and it is not in dispute according to this yeah. court. You have the right to appeal that, and I'm sure that you, you may, if I find that there was a second act of harassment. So at this yeah. point in time, the second act is the only thing that remains. We do have a copy of those uh, exhibits that were admitted for you, sir, so that you can have okay. that, so you can have a complete record. Of Thank you, sir. All right. So we'll see everyone back here on uh, September 17th at 3 p.m. And I will order at this time that the uh, city prosecutor, that Mr. Merritt, uh, appear. Again, the only issue that he would be testifying to is whether or not Mr. Brown was disruptive in court. Um, because according to Mr. Brown, and as well as the city attorney, he was present uh, for that incident. Now. Uh, Mr. Brown, I don't know whether this testimony is going to be helpful to you, but I don't, I'm not going to tell you how to present your case, so that's, that's entirely up to you. But uh, he will be ordered to be present um, in order to uh, testify as to whatever he remembers, whatever he knows about whether or not you were disruptive in court. All right, sir? Okay, so we'll see you. everyone back here September 17th at 3 p.m. May yes. I ask one question? Yes, sure. go ahead. Rebecca Cassett, I'm the legal advisor for uh, Tucson Police Department. Yes. And um, we're, I think we're all co confused about who is left um, and who has been served with a subpoena. And I'm happy to arrange whatever officers need to be here. But if we're just to that one, just to that one issue, what happened on the 24th, um, do we need Officer Sherman? Yes. Officer Guiney and Herbert All of them are there, yes. And uh, Mr. Brown, what I will do at this time, since we do have time right now, I'll have you make a proffer as to what each of those officers individually would be able to testify to, and then I'll have you coordinate with the uh, attorney for the Tucson Police Department yeah. uh, in order to secure their presence. All they right. was all right there, participants okay. in it. So Go they, ahead, start with your first officer. Okay, so uh, Officer Sherman was the officer that, uh, that, uh, that took orders from Christopher Hill and took that paper uh, from the uh, injunction against harassment that he didn't have yet. So he went there to serve him, and he tried to arrest him for the 15 minutes. That's the officer that did all the, the violence on Patrick. Who? Patrick Gonzalez. See, he's the one that did the whole thing with that, uh, that Mr. Hell said I was interfering with, you know, by just talking, Your you know. Honor, okay, so I'm hearing that's the, irrelevant. What Mr. 
what Mr. Sherman did with respect to Patrick Gonzalez is relevant to whether he was interrupted or not. He said, I was interrupting him. Christopher Hale said, I interrupted them too, sir. So, okay, so, so I have a lot you, of questions. What do you anticipate that he's going to testify to? Are you anticipating that he's going to testify? He's going to testify to everything that he did and saw and... And, uh, is, he, is he going to testify to the? To, is he going to testify that you were not disruptive in court? Yes, sir. You yes. Can, yes. Well, he should because I wasn't disruptive, and if he does, he has to perjure himself to to say I was disruptive. So I do need him on the stand. He's right. for sure. I find that that officer is relevant. You may call him. What's your next officer? Uh, our officer Gunny. Officer Gunny is the is the guy that uh, made the decision that I was disruptive when he talked to. Uh, to Sergeant Sherman, he, I think Officer Gunn, he's the one that did come in and take me out. And he, but he came at the tail end, you know, I would say at the, about the eight minute mark, but he's, uh, he's relevant. He was the uh, Sergeant in charge, making the decision on everything. And he saw that I wasn't disruptive himself. Okay, okay. if he came in at the tail end, he's not relevant. That officer is not required to appear. What's your next officer, sir? Okay. Uh, well, he was in the room, though. He did come and tell in, but he was in the room. That's been decided. Who's your next officer, sir? Uh, okay, let's see. Officer Officer uh, Wilson, and I will give him up voluntarily. Okay. He, he came in, he came in uh, with Sergeant Gunny at the tail end, so okay. if you're going to rule that way on that, I'm sure. Okay, and who's the next officer, sir? Uh, let's see, Wilson... <clears throat> I got, I got Did you Larry. need a minute to review your notes? I'm not trying to rush you. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So Larry was here there for the whole thing, pretty much. He came in there with Officer Sherman, uh, and then Alan Merritt, and then uh, and all my other witnesses. You know, they they don't need subpoenas. I mean, they're going to be here. So, okay, so we've so, got Officer Sherman and Alan Merritt, and that's all we need to coordinate with the city attorney's and Larry. office. And Larry. and Larry, yeah, Larry's here though. So he's here okay, at this one. So we have those three witnesses that we need to coordinate, and otherwise the city attorney does not need to be concerned about your witnesses. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's been decided. So we'll see everyone back here September 17th at 3 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, can yes. I, uh, just because we've had some difficulties yes. in scheduling this far, if we ask our witnesses to be here on the 17th at 3 o'clock, I'd like them to be called first, if that's okay with Mr. Brown. That way we don't have to worry about if the thing goes long or if it that's gets rescheduled or... Like, if our witnesses are going to show up. Mr. Guinea was, for example, was here earlier and he wasn't able to be called. I understand. If we can get witnesses here, I'd like them to be, I mean, I, you can decide how he wants to order his witnesses, but I would ask Mr. Brown to concede that when, if those witnesses show up, they get called first and we'll deal with and, them first. And Mr. Brown, because these, these witnesses may be very busy, uh, and I'm not saying that your, wit your other yes. witnesses are not busy, they are as well, I understand that. Uh, but because we're pulling them out of other courts and other things, would you be willing to call those witnesses? Yes, I can. But, but keep in mind, sir, that I my witness has been here three times now. And I understand that, sir. And I'm not saying that your yeah. other witnesses are not yes. busy. I'm not trying to minimize the, yes. uh, trying to the get inconvenience this. that they but have yes. as well. I, I will. Be to call those yeah, I would. I would like to call Vernon Pell's very first if I could, and then the rest I could. But but I can do that first if it's if it's. Uh, okay. If it's How okay. long do you anticipate Mr. Pell's testimony being? Uh, his will probably be pretty short. Uh, do you think was, you could keep I would say fifteen minutes. Yeah. So if you could have the witnesses come half hour late, then that'd probably be fine. If they if you come, can. maybe fifteen minutes. Afterwards? Fifteen minutes late. Yes. All right. So would that work yes. for the city attorney? Yes, and that we'll way we can anticipate keep. that our witnesses will be here at three forty-five. Perfect. Okay, very good. So that's what the time this starts is 3.30 then. So it's going to start at 3 o'clock. We'll let oh, three you call okay. however many people you want to. Then at 3.45, we'll anticipate that the okay. witnesses being coordinated by the city attorney will be here. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. very Thank good. You. We'll see everyone back here September 17th at 3 p.m. Thank you.
Yeah, let me get these turned off here.